Welcome back to the procedural dungeon generator. So today I'm going to do a video that I've been toying with for a while and kind of promised it over on our discord. So yeah, I kind of dragged my butt on it and now I'm fast tracking it because the interest in this video series continues to grow. So um, to help me help you, we're going to do some new stuff. So on our project as it is, we've got some debug cubes that give us a basic idea of where our hallways are trying to reach. And then if a hallway is not generating, we kind of kind of see what points it's trying to reach. But they're pretty basic. So what we're going to work on today is instead of having just basic point A, point B cubes, we are going to, let me open up my other project here, have directional debug lines showing a start point, an end point, and what solver they're using. Okay, so exciting stuff. It's not too horribly complicated. There's some math involved, but we're going to go through that. And then it's just a long, tedious setup. So as you can see in my demo here, I don't have the corners set up yet, but we're going to do that as we actually build out the system ourselves, or from scratch. So, yay, let's jump right into it. I'm going to open up our dungeon generator. And I'm just going to go grab my other project and grab the function I want from it. So I can follow along on my other screen. <laughs> Pre-do it so I can cheat and make it nice and easy going forward. Um, crap, they both kind of have the same name. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go to our base event graph. So we're going to want a couple things. So we're going to want to see where the rooms are spawning. Okay. See each individual room. And the other thing we're going to want to see is where the corridors are going. So we're going to do two new functions. We're going to add a new function here. We're going to call this debug underscore room extents. Okay, in room extents, we're going to add a couple endpoints. I'm going to add location, which will be the root location of the room. And this is going to be one of those int vectors. to int vector there we go and then we're going to add another one and this is going to be our extents just for how large the room is and we're going to be plugging that right into our graph so if we go back here we're going to add it each time we make a floor area so we're going to do it over this generate our first room and we're going to do it over here as we find our next rooms. Yeah. So we're going to take that here, pull it out, plug it in, plug in our location and our extents, and then we're going to hit C to comment it debug room. I'm just going to contain that a little better and change the color of my comment to a red. I'm going to put all our debug stuff in red and I'm going to copy paste, bring that on up here, plug that in, plug that in, and there we go. Let's edit that function. I'm just going to go double check recording software. It seems to be going fine. Perfect. Okay, so first thing we want to do is make sure that this isn't a shipping build. The debug lines themselves won't draw in shipping builds, but the text we're going to add later will. So we're going to do a check is package for distribution 
if that is not the case. So we're doing a test build or a development build. Then we'll branch off and continue doing things. Okay, and at this point we're going to duplicate our debug room extents and we're going to call this debug corridor section. There we go. And make sure we're back in room extents. So first thing we need to do is get the room location. So we're going to take our location. We are going to multiply. I'm sorry, we first have to convert that to a vector. A regular old float vector. We are then going to multiply by our scale, which I think is under map settings. No. Where is scale? There you go, editor tools, scale. Make sure everything's staying semi-nice, clean, and readable as we go through this. Okay. We then need to get our extents. So we're going to break our int vector. Actually, do we care about doing that? Not really. We can do a same thing here. Boom. And we're just getting our extents. Okay, and we're scaling it up to the size of our tiles. The next thing we want to do is, I'm pretty sure, where is, oh, I'm doing that elsewhere. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is minus the root from here. So you're going to get the root out of the extents. So we're going to call this root location. Extents. Okay, and there we are. We want, then want to divide this by two. Perfect. And they're going to split that vector pin. So what this is giving us is this is giving us the size of our box that is going to draw around our room area. Now we need the location for our box. So we're going to get our root location. We are going to add a vector, our actor location. So this way, it's not drawing the cubes like it currently is here, down on 0, 0, 0, or sorry, down on 0, Z. Um, it will be drawing it at whatever height our actor is. We then want to add in the extents here. Sorry, no, we want those extents plus that, and then our root location plus that. Then we're going to add those together. And what we're doing here is we're getting the center point. So remember, our root location is a corner, okay? 
So let's say our room is this last plus node here. It's giving us this corner, and then the extents are going forward on the X and right on the Y. Okay. What we need to get is because the debug boxes are drawn from a center point, we need to, instead of getting this corner, we need to get that center point. So, and that's what the math we're doing right now is. So we're going to divide that by 2, I believe. Okay. move all this back here and this here we're going to comment get center point of room yeah I had some other conversion stuff up here before that I really didn't need like I broke this out and then recombined it and all that can be taken care of just by multiplying there and dividing there. So I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. Oh well, is what it is. We are then going to do a draw debug, draw debug cube or box. There we go, draw debug box. Okay, so our extents, I'm going to split this pin, extent X and Y, we're going to plug in there. Our extent Z, we're going to get our scale. Okay, our center point is going to be this center point we just got. I am going to make our room color pink because I love that as a debug color. We're doing zero rotation. We could put in the rotation of the actor, but um, it's like right now this will do actor location, but it doesn't do actor rotation. So um, keep your actor not rotated, the um, dungeon generator itself. Don't rotate it in the world. Otherwise, it breaks all this stuff. Okay, so rotation zero. I am going to make this last for 5,000 seconds, and I'm going to give it a thick thickness of mm, 10. Okay, now if we go back out to our event graph, that should be running. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect. I'm just going to alt click on that line, tile spawning. Oh. New parameter does not match parameters. We need to refresh that node. Compile, save. And now we should see, hey look, it draws boxes for us where our rooms would be if we plug the tile spawner back in. Yep, it's drawing boxes just inside our rooms. Perfect. Now we're going to start working on our corridor debug. So we're going to go to our debug corridor section. Okay, we've already got it checking for the distribution branch or not. We're going to come in here, we're going to rename these to point A and point B slash corner. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to move this to the other monitor so it stops clicking up and down. Okay, we are then going to add two more inputs. We're going to get um, section 
description. And that is going to be text. And then we also want to know whether or not it is valid. We'll call that valid section. And that will just be a Boolean. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to show you all a new neat trick. So with functions, all the inputs coming into them are technically temporary variables. Okay, so like this point A is a variable being passed into the function. So that means we can come in here and we can get point A for this function. And point B corner. And we never actually have to run a pin to these. And that's going to be handy because this is going to be a bigger graph that we're making here. Okay. So we're going to get this. We're going to do a two vector. We are going to multiply that by our scale. Just going to get scale. And then we're going to add this. to our actor location. Okay, and then we're doing the exact same thing with corner B. So we're just gonna duplicate that stuff over plug in our variables. Something like that. And then we could bring that there. We could bring this back here. Something like that. Just keeping it all nice and tidy. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've got those, we are going to create a couple debug drawings. So we're going to do a debug sphere, and this is going to be our entry point. Okay, and I'm going to set it to a 50 radius. I like having it not so noisy on the screen, so I'm going to put it to a smaller segment count. We're going to say green is go, so green will be the color of our entry point. Duration, I'm also going to set to 5,000. And thickness, let's go for something like 5. Okay, then for our point B or our corner, we are going to do a draw debug box. Okay, and its extents are going to be the same as our radius, so I'm putting those 50 throughout. Our center position is right there. Line color on that, I'm going to make it more like a blue. So we're going green to blue, rotation, nothing, duration, 5,000, thickness, 5. I'm going to plug that in. And we are going to comment this. Draw debug start and end points for section.
Okay. Let's plug it in somewhere so we can see if it works. So we're going to compile, save. We are going to go to our corridor mapper. So corridors, map corridors. We're going to get rid of our old debug stuff. We are going to grab our new debug corridor section. Plug it in here at the end. And we want to plug in our point A and B. This is off the good side there, so this will be a valid section. And then we're going to put on our description just for fun. So this is the make corridor from A to B on Y axis. Um, this is where our things are going to fall apart a little bit. So we may want to rename those later, but um, we're going to keep them for now. Actually, you may want to rename them in your own project, but for the tutorial project, well, I'm, I'm going to leave it the same just because then it is consistent throughout because especially this debug video it can kind of be done in a couple points along the series it's not um, necessary to do right at the end okay um, but yeah like for example here we've got um, this is on the y-axis so this would be like next room right next room left kind of thing um, on Y and then this would be like next room forward next room behind Kind of deal if you wanted to be more accurate than the A to B or B to A Because um with our corridor section, we're always going to go A to B because it's going to show the flow of our corridors But anywho while I'm being rambly, let's just compile and save and then we should see There's a circle Going to a square for our beginning and end point of the corridor. And there's our circle and square. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So our corridor section is working. Next, we want to make a directional line. So this is a fun bit. It gets just a little bit more complicated. So we're going to grab our point A and point B again. We Actually, we're going to just grab all of this because we need that again. Okay. So we've got our world locations for our point A and B. We're then going to get a look at rotation. Define look at rotation. We also need how long this is. We're going to get distance. And there we go. So we got our distance, we got our look at rotation. Our distance we are going to divide by our scale. We want to see how many tiles reside between these two points. Okay. Our look at rotation, we're going to find forward vector, or not find forward vector, sorry, we're going to get forward vector. Um, our distance, our scale, we are going to truncate because we're turning it into an integer. We're also then going to minus one to fix our for loop that we're going to do right now. So let's grab this. We're going to do a for loop. Not a for each, but a for. And we're going to bring this back here. So we're going to start at 0, 
we're going to go to whatever that distance is. And when we do that, we are going to add this forward vector to another vector. And that other vector is going to be our distance multiplied by r. Sorry, this is not our forward vector. This is going to be our point A location. So point A location plus forward vector multiplied by scale. times and the number of steps we're taking forward plus our original location. Okay. And then we're going to add another plus pin here and we are going to add negative mm, 10 to that overall thing. So this is just dropping the arrows we're going to draw a little lower because we're going to draw text on top of it in a second here. So for this we're going to draw debug arrow. Okay, the line is going to start right here. The line is going to end at this plus another vector and that other vector is going to be our forward vector multiplied by our scale multiplied by mm, let's call it 0.75 you could just have it by scale and the arrows will butt up to each other. I just want a bit of space between my arrows to make them very visible what direction they're flowing. So this is going to make the arrows not quite as long as a tile. And we can actually do a um, reroute node here. And then we'll plug that in there. Straighten that off. We'll do another reroute node. Just keeping it all tidy. Just a little bit easier to read. Okay, and that plugs into that, which gives us our end location of our line. Uh, just to keep this bit a little bit more readable, we're going to do a couple reroute nodes to bump it up here above our previous nodes and then that way we can see okay we're getting point a's world location and plugging it in here with this other stuff cool and bring that in something like that Now we're actually going to bring that one up, so bring that guy forward a tad, maybe take its reroute node back. This is just aesthetics at this point. How do I want my nodes to look? There we go. I like that. My arrow size. Um, the arrow sizing seems a little bit weird, so I've been putting it at 1000. I am going to make it kind of a goldy yellow, so not like super bright yellow. This is kind of like construction yellow or gold yellow. Duration, I'm going to set that the same as everything else, 5000. And then I'm going to make this one a little bit thicker. So instead of five, it is going to be 10 units. Neat. And this here, we're going to grab, we are going to comment, and we're going to call this draw arrows 
a long corridor path. Okay, let's compile, save, and see how that is looking. Okay, because of the way everything's set up here, in my example, I don't have it spawning the um, corridors. So now that it is spawning corridors, we actually need to bring this up. So let's try putting it at um, plus 10. There we go. So that shows us where our corridor is going. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Now we are going to display what type of corridor section it is. So we're going to copy this section. So we're getting our point in A and B, but this time we want their relative location, not their world location. And we are going to add text render component right there. Okay. We are going to split this transform. And let's start doing our math for how it's going to look. So we're going to find look at rotation. And again, this is in relative space now instead of being in world space. Because this is going, whereas the debug spawn in world space, our text render component is going to spawn attached to the actor so we're using a relative transform there. Okay, so we're finding look at, we also need distance. Okay. Just straighten all these up. So we want half of this distance. So we're gonna divide that by two. So we're trying to get the middle point, because that's where we're going to spawn our text. We are then going to multiply that middle point by the forward vector of our look at rotation. So we're spawning it along the path that this is going. And then we need to add that back to our local vector. So we're going to straighten that off. And then, actually no, we're going to come here, we're gonna straighten that off, straighten that. And then we'll do some reroute nodes again to make this all nice and legible. Reroute nodes are your friends. And there we go. So now we can see where and how everything's flowing. So that is going to go into our relative transform. We're going to straighten that up and then move it all into the position we want it on the grid. We then also want to get a transform for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the up vector. And we are going to get the right vector. Okay. And then we are going to make an XZ rotation. So this is taking 
are two directions, okay, up and right, and then turning it into a rotation. We are then going to add an offset. Um, just doing add doesn't do anything here. For rotators, you need to do combine. And we're just going to rotate it 180 degrees on the Z. This comes from my own testing, just getting the words in a um, more readable fashion flowing with the arrows. And we're going to plug that into our relative rotation. Beautiful. Okay. So with the text render component, we're just going to go take a quick look at a text render component. Oh, where did it spawn that? It spawned it over there. So we're going to bring that out here. So it is reading negative x. So that's why we aren't putting the forward vector in as forward on our rotator, because we want to rotate that so it's looking up and be rotated to go along the x. So that's why we're using the, the y or the right vector as our forward vector. So that's going to rotate it so it's like that and that when it spawns it in. Mm -hmm. So that's why the math we're doing. So we're going to go back to our debug corridor section. Come on, why aren't you? Ah. Let me just go over this way for it. Okay, so we've done our math, set its rotation. Now we need to set some values here. So with our new text render component, we want to set a line, um, doo -doo -doo. Sorry. a line horizontal. So we want it centered from the position we're providing it. So we're going to give it a center justification. Okay, I believe by default it's aligned to the bottom. Yep, it is. Okay. Oh, I could just set that there in the side panel. Cool. We could do that, but I'm going to do it by um, nodes here. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to set world size. So this is going to be our font size. And I found that I liked it at 50. We also need to set a font color. So we're going to set color, text render color, and then I'm going to do a make color, and I'm just going to have it black, so I want all the values at zero except for the alpha, which I want at one, because I don't want it transparent at all. Cool, so that is our color, our justification. Now we just need to set the text. So we're going to set text. And for our text, what did we call our input text? Section description. We're going to right click, get section description. And plug that right in there. Okay. Um, the other thing we want to do here is because we moved our arrows up to like plus 10, we are going to add or move our text up to be above the arrows. So we're going to try something like uh, as I re-straighten all these things. I wish there was just like a straighten along connected or something like that. Like you can select them all and hit Q to straighten, but sometimes it does weird things, especially when you've got multiple connections between them. But um, yeah, just being able to be like, straighten everything along this chain would be great. Anywho, we're going to make this like, um, let's call it 25 units up. Okay, compile, save. 
And let's see if, there we go. We are now spawning our text. This is an A to B on Y axis. Beautiful. Because we're not spawning it in a void, um, it's kind of hard to read against our black and red tiles. So I am going to make it bright green. So I think 255 is the um, color space on these, or is it one? Mm, maybe purple. So we'll do blue 255, red 255. Oh, that gives me my pink thing. Yeah, there we go. So it's telling us what type of thing it is. Perfect. Okay. Now comes the tedious, boring, pain in the butt part of it all. Where we have to hook this up to everything. Well, first we're going to comment this. So we are going to go and call this... Corridor section text description. Okay, I was just double checking that my music wasn't coming through because, like, I can hear it through my mixer, but you guys can't, which is beautiful because I got complaints about music, but, um, I like working with music, so ha. Huh. I'm going to have my own music, and you guys don't get music now. Fooey on you. Well, you can listen to your own music too, so I guess that's even better that we all get to listen to what we want to listen to. So yeah, there is that. So we're going to compile, save, and now we're going to go to our map corridor section. And we're going to copy this. We are going to paste it in, or attach it to our corridor fail. And call it an invalid section. Just like that. Okay. We're then going to grab that. We're going to go C. And we're going to call this debug corridor. Hmm. If I could spell. And what, I made my other corridor comments red, so we'll do the same here. Okay, so then we're going to take this, control C, control V. And then we're going to plug that in there. Oh, we haven't done anything with the valid or not yet. We'll do that in a second. After we have all our straight line corridors plugged in. So there's all our straight line corridors. We're now going to go to our descriptions. And copy the description for it. Paste that into our section description. There we go. Okay, so those are all plugged in now. Um, even though this says B to A, we're always going to go A to B for the inputs. Okay. And then we're going to go in here. We are going to go to our draw debug arrow. We are going to get valid section. And we are going to go here. I'm going to copy that color profile. I'm then going to do a select. Plug our valid selection in there. If it is true, I'm going to make that our 
yellow color if that's false will make it our a red color there we go and we'll just do a quick comment change arrow colors if not valid So this way, when you get a corridor fails, your arrows will be red. Huzzah. Okay. And then we just have to go take a look, see if this is all working. So we've got our arrows there, arrows, and it's going to show us our path from our rooms. So it's going this way, then here's the next room, then there's the next room, then there's the next room. Nice. And that's a B to A, that's an A to B on Y, a B to A on X, an A to B on Y. See, and if that was failing, and this was like going way over here, you see, oh, I've got a B to A to Y, or on Y, that's failing, and i got to go and check that section. Mm -hmm. The other thing this lets you do is if you are, instead of using the instant static meshes, which are very fast to spawn, if you're, say, spawning um, actors or blue, yeah, like blueprint actors or static meshes, instead of instant static meshes, um, while you're doing your generation, you could generate just the debug boxes and not have it actually spawn the tiles and then only spawn the tiles when you're playing the game. And that way it would save you iteration time. If say you wanted to make a level, you're putting in your different seeds to make different levels and you want to do that fast and not wait for it to generate each time with actually spawning the tiles. Well then, hey, you can quickly see the boxes show up, see if you like the look of that and so on and so forth. Anywho, let's get back to the tedious, boring garbage that is setting up all the stupid things here. So now we need to do, well, we're going to copy one of these. Actually, before we copy it, we're going to set these to not show the bubble on them. They're big and red, and that is enough to know that they're debug. We don't need to show the little speech bubble above them. I'll grab one of these. I'm going to put it over here. Did I not copy it? I must have did a paste instead. So control C, control V. And now both of these are going to be valid sections. And we're going to do A to corner and B to corner. So in this case, our point B becomes our point A. And then we're going to go get our local variables, get our point corner. Or sorry, no, our B is still point B. Um, no, is it? So we're going from A to corner and then corner to B. Yep, so A to corner and then corner to B. Okay. And we want to run that. Actually, these are gonna be a couple separate things, aren't they? Okay, so first one comes here before our first branch. And then the second one just comes before our first branch again. And there we go. And then we get to copy that for all of these. Okay. 
and we're just going to copy it for the valid ones right now. And then I will go and put in the invalid ones and clean up this graph a bit so I can upload it to Patreon for the Patreon users that can just download the project. Mm -hmm. This is where something I need an editor that's like, hey, just speed this bit up. So if there's any of you that are real trustworthy out there and you want to be an editor for a sporadically uploading YouTuber that's slowly growing their user base but is not making any money off YouTube, so can't pay you anything, then um, get a hold of me on the Discord and maybe we can hash something out. Oh, that's taken other nodes with it. There's so many corner variations. It just like I said, this is just the tedious part. Mm, that's a B to corner. We may have to follow that, B to corner. No, because it's still A to corner. Da, da, yeah. Because A still goes to corner. And then it goes from B to... Why wouldn't I go corner to B if it does... Shouldn't make a difference for actually mapping the tiles. Like It doesn't matter which direction it's going there but it matters which direction it's going for the debug because you want to see the arrows you want to see which way the corridors are traveling so i think they have to all be like a to corner and then corner to b but we'll find out here soon if that flow looks right Yay, TDM. Oh, well, just a couple. Oh, of course, you had to paste in like the worst freaking spot. So it grabbed the node with it and started dragging it around. Same with that one. Come on. Silliness. Yep. So I get to go and clean all this up later for the Patreon guys. You better love me for it. Or at least appreciate the work. Because this is just... Eh. It's the not... F I am not gonna... No, I'm gonna spawn those ones down here. Because I don't want to have to clean up them messing up more nodes. I guess, like, if you're a Patreon user, it's kind of like, it's proof that you appreciate it because you're sending me money. Okay, and there we go. Beautiful. Now we just need to go and name all these. So we're just going to hook down, then left. up then left and just yep going through all these no you guys get the idea you just go fill out that information have fun with that i'm not going to show that on the video because that's just going to add like an extra 15 minutes of copy pasting 
But anywho, let's um make a bigger room count. So we'll do like 20 rooms so that we get some corners. Ooh, we are getting a disconnected room here. Cool. Why are we getting a disconnected room? And we are getting a corner here. No, that's not even a corner. There's just one long hallway. Oh, there's a couple long hallways. Okay, where's that coming from? So we've got a hallway from there to there. Neat. This is where we find issues. Cool. And then we've got like a B to A on X. That's just like randomly showing up there. Yeah, why we're getting a weird double hallway there. That's interesting. So I think one of those... So we definitely have our green to, uh, where does that one actually end? So we've got blue there and green there. Interesting. So yeah, it still does sometimes create some bad seats. So like here's a hook down then left. So I guess that way is X. Yeah, that way is X. So it's going negative X to negative Y. Yeah. But yeah, that way you can see the flow of where things are being created. And that's going to help me fix why that's not happening in a future video. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get a good spawn that um, doesn't have random disconnects. Oh, it's merged rooms, isn't it? Yeah, because like we've got merged rooms there. So it's probably a merged room. -ish. I didn't see a merged room on the other one. But yeah, like this way you're able to see the flow of this comes into this room which goes into this room that then comes into this new room, which then merges, that then comes over here and over here, and it just follows this path along, and you can see how it went through creating things. So like here's an interesting one. So it comes in here, then this room goes here. But then this room goes through this room and up into that room instead of coming here. Which, like, I like what it's doing. That um, it, it makes an interesting room down here. And all the connections work, but it only works by chance. Like, this could cause some other issues. Um, do I have... I am allowing the rooms to merge. I am truncating corridors that come through. Yeah. Should rooms ignore... No, rooms should not ignore corridors. And then... That should change that but it's not so the ignoring corridors is an oh no because there's there's no corridor there to ignore because the corridor is being created afterwards <laughs> so yeah now we need to make a test to see if that corridor intersects a room if it does try a different method interesting but yeah, there is um, debug information for you. Yeah, there's another one where it seems to 
do the same thing twice. Oh, actually, that one's really interesting. So, it comes into this room, goes to this room, to that room, and then just by chance, it leaves through the same exit and then makes a corner up to this room instead of making the corner that way. Again, makes an interesting room layout, but we'll need to make an option to check against rooms while it's spawning corridors. So I guess that is my next video for the procedural dungeon setup. But anyway, there's debugging and you can follow the paths and see how and what and why and where things are going. Have fun with that. Again, I'm going to clean it up for the Patreon download and get everything named properly on my end, but you guys can do that on your own end. So have fun with it. Bye for now, and we'll see you in the next video.